Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Doria Inez Larrier, the host and producer of The Digital Couch here on the internet streets. As I say, Dumela, Saobona, Sakpase, Namase, Upshin, Dubu, Otra, Asalaam Alaikum, Hotep, Buenas Noches, Bonsoir, and what's going on? I'm so glad to welcome you to our episode on A New Class is in Session. A New Class is in Session. Thank you so much to all of those who are here, who have been here, uh, sitting and learning with me, sipping some good tea, some good water, while we hear from inspirational leaders who impact, influence, and inspire their community to live life better than the day before. On our digital couch tonight, the person who will be up in a second, he'll be sitting right here, is a person who actually does his thing in the public eye, as most of our digital couch people do. He does his thing, though, by inspiring people to dig deep, to feel, to explore, to get past those comfortable conversations and get into some critical conversations about topics that sometimes can press a button. So why don't we enter into the conversation right now with Stanley Wayne Mathis. Hey, hey. <laughs> We good. How you doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> we good. We good. We good. Excellent. 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 So let me just give a little bit of housekeeping before we hop into our conversation tonight. You know, here on the digital couch, we do two things. We ask people to do two things. Number one, we hope that you have your tea because this is going to be some serious chit chat. If you have something to write, then I know you have your mug. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, I do hope that people are able to have something to, if you want to take some notes, because there's going to be some, some hot topics tonight, but also to share. Of course, sharing is caring. We are here on Facebook and YouTube. And so if you know that someone is around that needs to hear a word from on high, y'all going to understand this when we get into it, okay? That uh, you need to definitely be here in the room with us. Now, we are going to always say this. And so no matter where you are in this conversation, share, of course, bring people in. You, if you saw on your personal page and you see it, or if even it's in Zoom, excuse me, on YouTube, just press that share button and invite other people in. But also, if you hear something, I always say this, if you hear something that resonates with your spirit, I call it a poignant point, retype it in the chat, retype it in the chat. That way we can engage in conversation with you we can answer questions if you have questions, or we can see what you're saying and then respond, especially right after the broadcast is over, because we want to stay in conversation with you. First thing I want people to, to type, no matter when you see this, if it's on live on the replay, is type P-T-T-C. P is in preaching, T is in two, T is in the, C is in choir. Because that is the code word for tonight's conversation, preaching to the choir. It's also the acronym that is used on Facebook and on Instagram as where you're going to go to find out Brother Stanley Wayne Mathis's content for tonight and where to get your seat, where to get your seat. Because 913 is the big day. 913 is a big day. Let's welcome Stanley Wayne Mathis. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening to you. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so honored. I'm so honored. I'm so honored. I told y'all I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Y'all think people on the digital couch are like, mm -mm, no, this is serious things here, right? Serious things. I love it. Okay. So 9-13-21 is a huge day. Huge, huge day. Brother Stanley has been working on a really, really big story. A story that is going to touch hearts, that is going to probably make a couple of tears fall down your eyes, is going to make you lean back, fold your arms and say, mm. might be that you're thinking, was he sitting outside my window? Was he hearing my conversation? Was he listening to me in the middle of the night? Because I was thinking that same exact thing. Brother Stanley, tell us what we are looking forward to. Tell us about preaching to the choir. Well, 
it's it's interesting that you say, was he listening to my conversation? This piece is a conversation amongst us. Uh, I remember Joan Rivers used to say, talk amongst yourselves. Well, this is us talking amongst ourselves. So it's called preaching to the choir. We all grown up with that saying, we all know what it means. Um, um, so it's like, we're having the conversations. We've all been there. We all have a story to tell about this very conversation and we can all relate. Um, and it's called a slash an inconvenient truth to let people know that this ain't five guys named Mo. This ain't sophisticated ladies. This ain't hello, Dolly. Far this from it. One of those pieces. There, are, There's a place for that, for that, that type of theater, but that's not the type of theater I'm, I'm, I'm uh, doing here. Um, so it's an opportunity for us as a community, you know, choir, community, to get together and have this conversation, to have a, a cathartic conversation and to heal. See, we don't have time to heal. We haven't, we haven't started to heal from 1619. Right we're now, <laughs> right. So let's 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 dial it back a little bit. So we're going to give a little bit of framework here, as Brother Stanley is using the term "we," our. Although this conversation is for whoever slides across these internet streets and catches this either live on the replay, the "we" and the "us" and the "our." pronouns are for a particular group of people. Now, of course, everyone can listen. Everyone, I'm so excited that you are listening. But the the we, the our, the they, it's for a group of people that some may say in the greater society are part of the underrepresented group. I do not like to use the term minority because globally, the we are globally a majority. So maybe the numerical underrepresented group on this particular land mass. Is that a little easier to digest, Brother Stanley? I, I yeah, I like to use the the, the phrase um, marginalized. 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 Um, as I said once in an, in an equity meeting, uh, as they kept saying, "Well, you know the minorities and the minority and the my," and I said, "Excuse me, who came up with that phrase?" Because apparently, people of color was not at the table when you all came up with that information. What is in that word? What is inherited in that word? Minor. I want you to know that there is nothing minor about me. So you have to be careful. And as somebody who, who considers himself a, words, a wordsmith, words have power. And so I don't like to use So is that a plane? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is live. This is real. <laughs> I'm on 10th Avenue, so I, you know, I was like, "Oh Lord, is that me?" Um, but yeah, so I, I, it, it, it is a conversation for uh, people of color. If it resonates with anybody else, absolutely, I have no problem with that. I, I, you know, we're not, we're not known to be people to exclude anybody anyway. Uh, sometimes to our own fault, but so that's just fault. in our way. You know what I mean? Um, but this is this is a time for us to sit down and talk about what's going on. Because when we say Black Lives Matter, people scream, "All lives matter," and "Blue lives matter." I'm like, "Well, we ain't here to talk about that. Not okay? not today. Not right so now." Just giving us permission to speak on our own issues about our own community, about what we are going through from day to day and not be gaslighted or sidetracked by other people screaming other things in our ears because they don't want to hear what we have to say. So this gives us permission, this piece. Excellent, excellent. Now you have gone to, uh, you've definitely had other moments on stages, right? On Broadway stages, on television, uh, little snippets in some movie, a series. What makes this particular product, production, different from the moments that you have stepped 
throughout the curtain to reveal, to uncover, to expose, if you will, a story that may or may not be connected with you. How is this different? Most of the things that I have done on Broadway, a lot of it, I mean, there have been a few that have been, you know, I mean, when you talk about a piece like Jelly's Last Jam, that was a very special uh, project. Um, but most pe pieces uh, are not, I'm being brought into the room to tell basically someone else's story. A lot of times, uh, another community story, I'm, I'm asked to, you know, to include myself and to step in to uh, the larger pool uh, of, 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 of the world community, but it's not usually, I, I rarely, well, on Broadway, I don't get to talk about specific issues that address us and who we are and what we're going through. There have been a few projects that I've been called to show up as I am, as I am, who I am, bringing what I am and who, what I have to the table. Most times I'm asked to just, you know, come in, um, sing and dance. Um, you know, I call it the, the generic Negro syndrome. We just want the generic Negro. We want you here. We want, you know, we want people of color in the room. We mm -hmm. want the two of you. Usually the, I'm usually the only fly in the buttermilk. Uh, <laughs> syndrome but, mm -hmm. yeah you know what i'm saying but it's it's rarely whereas with jelly's last jam it was with the exception of two cast members was all black um and and with the exception of uh, uh one of the lion king maybe four characters but the rest of the character the rest of the cast were people of color not just people of color but from, from the uh, across the diaspora we had we had a uh, an um I'm having lunch with her tomorrow, Christine Yasanaga, who's, you know, who came in and did the show with us, wonderful dancer. We had people from uh, the Caribbean. We had, of course, the South Africans who came in. We had the African-Americans. We had all this mixture. We had one, one young lady who uh, was Puerto Rican and Mexican. <laughs> you know, Beautiful. I mean, so that's not something you walk into a room. Yeah, I don't, I'm not accustomed to walking into a room and experiencing that. I'm usually having to fit in where I can get in. Right. <laughs> kind of situation. So I, that's how it's very different. And it's, you know, so, and it's coming from me. It's not coming from some other writer. It is actually coming from me and what I have to say. So it is, it is very much my voice um, talking about subjects that expresses the voice of the community. I love it. I love it. Now, because this this conversation is coming under the guise of or under the arch, if you will, or the lens of a new class is in session, mm -hmm. there have been conversations, there have been instructional moments, mm -hmm. teachable moments, which is a term that we're using in these days where the narrative, I'm trying to use all of our comfortable terms, the narrative is twisted according to the teller. Mm -hmm. How is preaching to the choir an inconvenient truth from the voice of the person on the inside? Mm -hmm. Um as I when I first started this piece, I it it, it really came out of <laughs> believe it or not, Facebook post. Okay. Um, Listen, a whole lot of stuff be happening on the Facebook. I got, I got hooked on that social media thing <laughs> when I came off a tour from Book of Mormon and I'd wake up in the morning and reach for the phone and I'd started out by going to the bir birthday calendar. It was a great way to keep track of people's birthdays. And then after that, I'd end up on the, on, on the timeline and I'd see all these posts and I see all of these posts and I and in the Black Lives Matter protest and, wow. and, and, and uh, historical posts about things mm -hmm. that happened like Tulsa or, 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 or um, the Red Summer or, 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 or things like that and along with that the day-to-day -day actual live footage yeah. of us being literally brutalized by police beaten shot tased choked to death, you name it. Um, and I had to figure out a way myself 
because I, I, you know, I am an empath, but I don't like to turn away from things just because it's difficult. As a matter of fact, I want to confront it. So, but how do I, uh, how do I uh, uh, digest this? How do I process this information? So I ended up writing about it. I would write about it. I would write about it. That, that was my, my way of, uh, of therapy, you know. Yeah. Um, it was very ca uh, cathartic. Very Do cathartic. So. I was just um, looking at that. So, but at, at, at the end, I'm like, oh, I looked around. I had 200 poems. I was like, wow, you have 200 pieces. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> so it appeared, you know, and then, you know, all of a sudden spirit says to me, uh, I, I, I do believe in being guided by the spirit, um, whatever that means to you all. Um, but spirit said to me, you need to write a show. You need to write a piece. You need to write a play. Write. Continue to write. Don't stop here. So I had to go through those 200 pieces and, and sort of put a sort of a format together. And I thought to myself, well, how in the world am I going to put this this information together? And I thought, you know what, Stanley? Start with your own life. Start with the fact that every year you go to festivals, Dance Africa, Fourth of July Festival, Harlem Week. You have been going for 30 years to these festivals. Start there. So I started the, the, the play there. My character... Uh, uh, um, his name is Justice Jamal Obatala, opens up at the Afropunk Festival. Lovely. Because I realized that, wow, okay, Stan, you've been going for 30 years. Why do you keep going? It's not like you don't know what's there. It's like you haven't seen everything, bought everything. You know, and I realized, well, it's not just communing with the community here on earth, but if you throw a celebration for the ancestors, they're going to be there. Mm. So, so let, no yeah, more going on there, you know so, what I mean? So, yeah, let me, let me put it to the conversation. So, uh, how, how brother Stanley and I sort of came to be in essence, we have mutual, there are mutual people who we know who are dear to us. So shout out to the people who, cause I know they're watching. And when I first saw, uh, brother Stanley's image and the person who introduced us said, you probably know who he is. You've probably seen him because you go, you guys go to the same thing, to the same place. And I said, really? She's like, oh, he's always at the festival. I said, okay. As soon as I saw his face, I'm like, I know I've seen that brother. I know I've seen that brother. And so when we were talking prior to this, uh, prior to this session, he mentioned how he has been going for 30 years. And I said, that's interesting because I've been basically gone for 30 years. And when he dropped a location, now those of you who are not from Brooklyn or you're not from New York, if you don't understand what we're talking about, we say the African Street Festival. If you know about the African Street Festival, drop in the African Street Festival, but you, then you have to drop in the location. Are you from the original location? And I believe the original location, if I'm not mistaken, was maybe Claver Place or something like that. And then it moved to Boys and Girls High. I, I, I discovered it at Boys and Girls High. Right. That's where I discovered it. So yeah. some people were part of the like the first three or four years. It wasn't mm -hmm. at Boys and Girls. It was somewhere nearby. But if you're from the Boys and Girls place, you got to drop Boys and Girls High because you know what we're talking about. And I just remember seeing this amazing image. And it was Brother Stanley. And so we talked about and we had this shared feeling because I feel the same way and you know, a number of my friends don't understand. And I said, when I go to the festival and I used to watch them set up the night before, I would be there on the first day. I would be there on the second day. I'd be there on the third day. I'd be there on the fourth day until it closed. And people just like, didn't you go once? I said, you don't understand. There is a spirit that is, the, there's an energy First of all, all these beautiful African people together in the same place and things are good. There's love, there's sharing, there's story, there's reunion, right? And there's this sense of, and I'm always asking myself for 30 years, I've asked the same question. Where are you all the other 361 days of the year? Because I don't see you. But there is a story that is told there are children who have been raised up in it as this is like almost like your campground. Like right. this is where you reunion. You see, don't be, see people for the whole year, but you see them at festival. Same thing with Harlem League. Same thing with uh, Dance Africa. Mm -hmm. 
So we've been in the same spaces and that's sharing the same story. It's a place that we are allowed to be unapologetically. You know, so we don't, we don't apologize. win apologizing. We, we come as we are in all yes. our glory and all our diversity and all that that is. And, 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 it, and it's cool and everybody's cool with it. And, you know, the, uh, the white folks show up and they're welcomed. They don't feel threatened. They don't feel any of that. They come up and they can participate and, and enjoy the festivities. Like I said, we, we you know, we include people. It's not a thing of an exclusion. It's 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 a quote unquote black space. Un, very unlike how when we show up in so-called white spaces, we get the police called on us. <laughs> you know, if they show up at our space, we, you know, we you know, we're like, hey, come on in, enjoy this, you know. Yeah. Have some ginger beer. You ever had any sorrow? Hey, <laughs> have some sorrow. Have some you know, mob. Kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so it is really a very festive thing. But it, as much as it is about uh, the community, uh, physical community, it's about the spiritual community. You know what I mean? Um, my thing is, and has has been, I've been called to go further and further and further back, and reach back and grab that African spirituality before colonialism, before uh, uh, slavery, before all of that. Um, and so uh, as, the word, as the word says, Sankofa, and uh, I learned that uh, when I went to Ghana, Sankofa, go back and retrieve what is rightfully yours. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that's where our strength is. Um, we have been told to step over our past, forget about it, don't 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 dwell on it, forget about it. Let, 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 let. I don't know any other culture that does that. And we talked about that. So why don't why don't we just pause on that for a moment? And so our conversation and those of you who know if whether you don't even have to be, let's say, let's say in this in a spiritual space, in a historical space, in a um, if you were ed. I'm going to say it the best way. If you were educated, <laughs> as some other people may say, educated. If you were educated in any school system that was not a progressive, uh, let's say, Garveyite type of um, program, and when I say Garveyite, I mean, let's say, uh, Pan Africanist return to Africa, whatever, however you want to couch that, mm -hmm. then your first introduction to a, a, cultural, a cultural group and their story about their treatment where power was wielded, power was taken, power was usurped and used over them is approximately fourth grade. That story, and those of you who know, know, we don't even have to name it, was not ours. But that story sets the stage in a young person's mind, developmentally, that this is a group that has gone through hardship. Not to take away from that particular group, but the other groups, let's say globally, don't have their story told. And as a part of the curriculum, Mm -hmm. that is mandated to the extent that it is. Mm -hmm. so anything else that is done is circuitous, is uh, like a one-stop shop, a drop maybe on King Day, or even some people may say, well, you have Black History Month. <laughs> well, I, I actually had a sister say to me on the timeline when we were talking about Juneteenth federal holiday, and I, and I was like, okay, first of all, we Let didn't we didn't you. ask them to give us a Juneteenth federal holiday. We were celebrating on our own anyway, once anyway. Again, without your permission. Okay, what we asked for was an anti lynching bill. What we asked for is a George Floyd bill. What we asked for is you to leave our voting rights alone. What we you know, but but what did we get? A federal holiday that everybody gets off, not just us, but everybody gets off. And so the sister's response was, well, at least it's something. I said, sweetheart, after 400 plus years, I don't deal with the least you can do. <laughs> okay. Right. We, you know, we got to get out of that head. Right. You oh, know. well, you know, we, we gave you a slice of cake. We, we gave know. you a prom. No, what how about I want? What do you people want? 
<laughs> he's like, this is what we want. Stop right. sidetracking us with these tokens and give us what we want. Now, if you wanted to add on that federal holiday with all those other things I listed, then we good to go. <laughs> but you're not going to step over all of the stuff we've been asking for to give us a holiday for uh, merchants to sell merchandise uh, so that the money that, you know, it's a paid holiday, right, that we go out and shop and put right back into your in, in, into your pockets. Right. So, so right. You know, it's mm -hmm. that kind of critical thinking. And I've been that way since since fourth grade. Since my teacher said to me that Columbus discovered America, that's where it all started. And I said to her, she didn't know had the book and the book was, you know, two pages and had illustrations on the uh, over top of the writing. And mm -hmm. then one side was the Nina the Pinta and the Santa Maria with Columbus looking through a telescope and across the way. He's looking at these natives waving at him. And I'm saying to myself, I said to the teacher, how can he discover America if somebody was already there? So she starts going to this whole thing about the queen of Spain and the blah, blah, blah. I'm like, lady, I don't know who that is. I don't care who that is. I'm asking you a very basic question. Right. You know, so nothing she would, nothing she said satisfied me. I, I would keep inquiring and I would keep asking. And she got frustrated and she made me go stand in the corner so that she could get through the rest of her class. Now, most people did that saying that that face you made, that's what a lot of people did. Oh, my God, I can't believe the teacher did that. And I said, no, 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 no. She did me the best favor she could have ever. She gave me the best gift she could have ever given me in my entire educational career. Because what that taught me is that you question everything. There's a difference between an indoctrination and an education. That's right. So that's that's the type of child I was. You can't ask me to be any different as an adult. Um, you know, I'm going to be more intense as I get older. You know, so I just want people to 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 develop their critical thinking skills, which is something that's not taught in school, which is something that's not celebrated in in, in our students in school. It's and we're getting thinking skills and understanding that. Black Lives Matter is not a new movement. This ain't our first Black Lives Matter movement. It's not our. This is not and our first rodeo. Young kids don't understand that. Yeah, we we. I've been Black Lives Matter in, in since the sixties. Trust, trust and believe. So, <laughs> this is not. You know what I mean? And to see the connection, and when you don't, you know, the thing about we are not a linear people. Okay. We're circular. You know, as that song says in The Lion King, the circle of life. The circle of life. We're circular. You know, we worship the sun, the sun god, sun ra. Everything is, is circular. If you look at the patterns and things in our clothing and the African designs and stuff, and you can see the circle just about everywhere. It's mm -hmm. there. So you, you know, the, the past, the present, and the future does that. They're all connected. If you leave out one, you don't have the other. So stepping over the past to get to the present or the future only means you go run smack dead into the past again. Because as the saying says, those who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it. Doomed to repeat it. Yeah. So this whole idea, we have got to get past this whole idea. We've been shamed into wanting to know who we are. Right. Unlike other people who were able to bring all the immigrant stuff, who were able to bring their music, their language, their drums, and all of their other stuff over with them. And if they decided to give it up once they got here, they, they decided that. They didn't have to. Right. We didn't even given that opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So we don't spend our own money. We don't use our own names. We don't speak our own language. We don't the God we, we serve don't look like us. Come on, people. And no so having such a struggle in this country. Right. So to, to, to that to that end, and let me just also sort of give like the 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 little backlink of you will see in the chat, you'll see in the description. If you go to at PTTC, which is the initials of preaching to the choir on either Facebook 
or Instagram, you will find the um, the flyers, the digital flyers, and you will see the link for the Zoom that we want that Brother Stanley that we want you to go to as soon as possible to get your Zoom seat. You want to be in the Zoom room for September thirteenth, twenty twenty one, for the this choreo poem. Mm -hmm. Am I saying it right? Yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Choreo poem, uh, this production that he is putting together again. So if you either go to Facebook or Instagram and you type in at PTTC, you will go directly to his page. He has a page on both platforms for this event. You will see in the feed in Facebook and in Instagram, the Eventbrite link that it is hyperlinked. It is blue. So just click on it and go. And to in, to see this work, I mean, I've I've had an opportunity to take like a little sneak peek at parts of it. I am floored. It is one of those moments. If um, if you are of, let me say, of the diaspora, those of you who know know what I'm talking about, and you have seen Daughters of the Dust. I'm blinking because we need to like have a little pause moment. If you've seen Daughters of the Dust, if you've seen um even the color purple okay if you've seen what is um suicide when the rainbow isn't enough oh, yes That's part of color it girls. for color girls thank you if you've seen for colored girls and now although there are these are female dominated casts and some people have you know their own little question about that that's not a problem but the way the narration runs. Thank you so much, Brother Patrick. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, he made a comment in on YouTube. I appreciate you. So if you've seen any of these pieces of work, the type of narration that is done is akin to, right, into Zake Shange. Yes, and bless her because she's just transitioned in the last few years. Uh, and Alice Walker, thank you, The Color Purple. So if you've seen any of these pieces of work, of any of these works, it, the narration style and flow and the passion that is felt when you hear these characters speak and tell their stories or tell your part of the story. It's a moment that literally you just don't have to sit back and be like, ooh, this is a whole mood. Like this is a whole mood. I need to go through this. And so let's just try to uh, pop for a moment into whether it be like critical race theory or the critical conversations or the uncomfortable conversations, you, you speak about this is an opportunity for us to not only tell our story or to hear our story, because sometimes whether it be at the family, the family gatherings or off times, let's say the family transition ceremonies, like going to the funeral where you like, oh, well, you didn't know the cousin so-and-so was actually, you know, like the grandchild or the niece or the sister because like the stories that get that get told. Sometimes we have to wait for those difficult those difficult moments to have these unknown things, right? Or these revelations. And this this piece gives people the moment to unlock some of those doors. Yeah. Unpack. Yeah. He, to unpack and to hear yeah. some of the the stuff that usually people say, look, what happens in this household stays in this household. Right. Don't go. Don't go be putting that stuff out in the street. But then if you don't get to work through some of those things, you walk around with like questions in your head. You walk around like I just know that on so and so is called on so and so. But why does she look exactly like my other cousin who lives on the. <laughs> right. It's, it's an opportunity for us to. Have our it's own little couch. What people do, like uh, using the word couch. Any, I always say, in, anytime somebody goes to a doctor to to work out an issue, a psychiatrist or whatever, the first thing they do is take you back. They That's take so you back to where the trauma took place. Right. Otherwise, they can't help you. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot to unpack. We are some traumatize some triggered people. That's why it doesn't take much to set us off because we're triggered, you know, that's 400 years. Come on, that's a lot, you know, and um, we, you know, I, I ain't mad at, at, at the Jews 
because they say never again. And they make sure that their children don't ever forget, ever. Not only their children, but everybody else's children too. Well, we should be the same way about our story. Precisely. You know I mean? Don't get mad at them. You know, get out there and, and tell your story and make sure your children know what went down. And 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 as the song says, my soul looks back and wonders. And wonders how I got how over. I got over. This is how you got over. You didn't get here on your own. <laughs> <laughs> as talented and as brilliant as you are, you did not get here on your own. There are all these people who came before you who made it so that you could come out here and express yourself. And, so be, you and, and live your best life. And live your best life. And part of that is honoring your ancestors. Every culture does it. So right. let's not be ashamed. Let's not apologize. Let's not feel like, we well, we can't talk about this. No, we can't hear and we will hear because we need to for our own good. Right. Now I'm going to, I'm going to throw something in and I, I already know what the response is going to be. But again, this is a moment to have, as we do on the digital couch, some have some critical conversations. So some people, uh, and let's just say within the diasporic group. So again, there's people from other groups who will, who will probably be watching this and like, oh, maybe I should take a peek. That's why come on in. Cause everybody need to get educated, right? Everybody, everybody need to hear the story. There are some folks within the, the community who may say, you know we're not supposed to talk about that. That's the stuff that we want to just keep hidden. But once again, if we don't talk about it, we can't move forward. And then we'll still have these, we'll still have these paper bag conversations. Now, if you know what the paper bag relevance or uh, re yeah, relation is to this story, then you know. If not, we'll talk about that on another day, right? <laughs> if you, if you, <laughs> that's just not this conversation. But if if there are this is the we're having a little technical difficulty here. Excuse me, she's going to make it back in. So that internet connection with all these storms and whatnot. <laughs> Can you hear me? Are you there? I don't know if she can hear me or not. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying right there. Little, uh, little storms and causing internet issues and whatnot. <laughs> that's okay. We're going to pick right up. So uh, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Well, we're, yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking about the whole thing about just being able to 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 give ourselves permission to talk right. about these these secrets that we hold on to uh, uh you know when you said the paper bag thing and that that's one of the big secrets that we carried on to the next generation is colorism that's like right. that's okay we need to unpack that right, <laughs> right. and yeah. some people right and some people will say well, you know, like haven't haven't we dealt with that already? No, obviously again, not. Right, obviously not. Once, right, once again. And so I was just having this conversation with some other uh, brilliant people, and we were talking about the doll study. Now, again, mm -hmm. those of you who know what the doll study is, then you know. Those of you who do not know, just look up the doll study. Very short. It was just a story, a study of two dolls, a black doll, a white doll, and children who are preschoolers were asked the questions based on the color of the doll uh, about characteristics and behaviors and likability. So if you, if that's ringing a bell for some people, fine. But this is what we're talking about. And so even now, even now, even now, with who is being profiled more? 
And we're not talking about 10 years, 15 years ago when racial profiling was an issue. We're talking about right here and now, up until even a couple of days ago, I go in, I go in to, to, to make a purchase and someone, and it was a sizable purchase and someone says to me, um, well, if he, they presumed my economic ability and they said, well, here's the payment plan like over 24, 36 months. And I looked them in love, dead in the eye. And I said, I'm buying it now. And the person literally said, oh, well, okay. And okay, all right. So there, there, uh, there at times is this own uh, sort of intra yeah. expectation not even talking about folks who are not, who are, let's say, similar to us. We are sort of raised to think, well, when we walk into places, when we do things, when we step into rooms, you know, when you step into a room, when you step into an audition, right? Some people may, and I hear this about folks who are in theater, some people will get typecasted, right? Best based on your, whether it's the cultural background, the linguistic background, or, the colorism issue. If we, but if that's happening today, and there are organizations that are being built up to counter that, then no, we haven't dealt with some of those issues. So once again, preaching to the choir and inconvenient truth allows people, and we're not waiting for somebody else to give us permission. No, we're not doing that anymore. No, there are a few great people like yourself, um, like other producers and and writers and composers. Uh, even I was having this conversation about Hamilton earlier and how, you know, that brother was like, hey, we're going to talk about this or um, what's the thing? Watch the Heights, right? Mm -hmm. But the people who are leading that charge and are, who are setting the people as the, the it's called the principal, like the main leads on that. Mm -hmm. No, there are going to be people who are going to be representing from other groups that have quote unquote prior to this been marginalized. Well, no longer are we marginalized. We are stepping, but we are Tyler Perry, an example. He's not waiting for other people to let him in the room. He done bought his own building. He's not waiting for somebody to sit him at the table. He bought an entire, you know, an army of desks and chairs and walls and windows and doors. And so thank you so much for bringing this story to us um, and allowing us to have another opportunity to breathe. Another we, opportunity. Can't, we can't afford to drop the ball this time with our youth. Um, and I'm at a certain age now where I, I realize it's more important than ever. Um, bridge that gap. <laughs> you know, it's a gap that doesn't have to be there. You can bridge that gap and, 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 and not leave them uh, in the wind, not understanding uh, why things are the way they are and why they behave the way they behave. They don't understand. Like I had a class that I, the name of the class was Sankofa. And I was, and they did a piece for from Intazaki's piece uh, called, uh, um, oh Lord, it went right out of my head. Um, uh, spell number seven is the name of the piece. Mm. And the opening number is uh, 10 little piccaninnies all in bed. One fell out and the other one said, I see your hiney, all black and shiny. I see your hiney, all black and shiny. And these students, you know, they were in their twenties and thirties, had no idea. I said, have you all ever heard that children's song? I grew up with that. It's a song. So, you know, when they pick it up, they're gonna be, I see your hiney, all black and shiny. I see, because they don't have a reference. Right. If you have a reference. There's no rhyme embedded. I see your hiney, a black and shiny. If you don't hide it, I'm gonna buy it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's it, that's what I mean by going back and, and and retrieving what is yours. Those things that we've been taught to be ashamed of. Um, because if you don't, people will come in here and do a better version of you than you. It's it's happening. It has happened. Um, the whole color color line thing we've all grown up with. If you're black, get back. If you're brown, stick around. If you're yellow, stay mellow. If you're white, you're all right. Yeah. These are uh, folkisms. Right. 
that has been passed down to us that all of a sudden this generation don't really know anything about. But a lot of times our writers who write for us and about our culture and our community, they will include these things into their works. And so you need to know where to go when, you know, when August Wilson says the city of bones. Yes. You need to know what that is. <laughs> right now. So actually, let me, I, this is actually a conversation that I will probably, or oh, it's a phrase or it's a question that I will definitely continue to add into this particular series, which is a new classes in session. So whether you say it's in part critical race theory, in part on un, being unapologetically, uh, I'll just say diasporic. Mm -hmm. When, and you don't have to answer this question, but this is going to be my, again, an answer that makes sense. People say, make it make sense. I want somebody to make it make sense to me. At what point do we do we share these folkisms, as you say? And one person who I hope to have here really soon said, like, quote, unquote, one is developmentally appropriate. Let me get right up close and personal. When is the talk? When, when is the, right, for who? When is the talk? appropriate yeah. well, who, why are we see what we do is we tailor and everything according to white folks and how they feel you know there's a saying you know that you all in your feelings they get in their feelings and we get worried about them getting in their feelings about things as a, I, I, as one person said that to me one time well, well i just feel like i'm under attack i said well i don't have time for your feelings my <laughs> life is on the line here right so, you know, you, 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 your feelings will pass, you know, you, that, well, that's a very momentary thing. Right. But if so I, I have to live. Been killed or tased or choked, that's the end of my life. And my family has to carry that legacy from generation to generation. Meanwhile, you are under some other feeling. So I don't have time for your feelings. We got to stop worrying about them We've been doing that for 400 plus years and they still ain't got it together, which means there's nothing that we can do. That means that's their work to do. Now, what I'm interested in is going back and, and, and undoing all the trauma that we have, that we keep carrying into generation to generation. Right. Now, of course, that's that you are taking on in the way that you can through this choreo poem, through preaching mm -hmm. to the choir and, and inconvenient truth. You have put on, let's say, the superhero cape, if we're going to use that analogy, uh, or you may say the Legba beads, right? Because, you know, I know, I know. <laughs> or you are picking up the sage brush. Come on, thank you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in order to, right, cleanse the atmosphere, like we need a new room. Mm -hmm. um, Self-care is necessary. Self-care is essential. If we want to tag the self-care uh, sticker, you know, to this moment, then we can tag this self-care uh, to this. If we want to say this is part of the nap ministry, right? Again, I'm trying to use these like sort of wellness tools that we're throwing around and, and uh, associating it or, or adding the taglines to, to an extent to make it palatable, to an extent to make it understandable and relatable to people who are listening and watching and trying to find some moment of, I need to have a place for myself. I need to be able to, to work through whatever the it is. I need to be able to walk into a space as myself, quote unquote, live in my best life. But you know what? You can't live your best life if you don't understand the life that you have lived and the life that people think you should live. So that when you walk into a room and someone says, well, let's just say there's a seat, think of a rectangular table, four or five seats on the sides, one at the at each of the heads. Depending on what room you walk into and who you are in that room, some people will just go walk to the head and some people will go sit on the sides. A person uh, who, let's say, in certain rooms may be marginalized may think, I know where I kind of want to sit, but <laughs> what, right? But what will well, I do? It's the thing we do when we walk into the room and there's only two or three of us. 
And we don't want to gravitate to each other immediately because we know the white folk are watching and that the white folk are going to feel uncomfortable. And that, you know, that's what I'm saying that everything we do, as Toni Morrison says, is gauged under the blue eyed gaze. Ooh. We have to stop doing that. You understand what I'm saying? We're not doing ourselves a favor and we're not doing them a favor either. Okay? <laughs> you know, you need to come as you are. They do. Okay? So that's that's what I'm saying. You know, and that's what I want my the, the younger generation right. to understand. It's not about being arrogant or bullheaded or anything. It ain't about any of that. It's about stepping into your power. You know, we didn't have, you know, I know my family, you know, they, we, we didn't, you know, dirt poor. We didn't come from the upper middle class, you know, black families. And they do exist. Of course. Everybody ain't in black in America ain't poor. <laughs> okay. Um, but I don't come from that. But I know that there is uh, treasures and riches far beyond money and material things that will sustain me, that won't sustain them with all that they have. You understand right. what I'm saying? So you, the, the, it, it's about stepping into your power and claiming that power and not, and not feeling like you got to, you know, massa, uh, 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 is, is, is we sick? No. What is, wait, massa, is we sick? Massa, is our house on fire? You we know? ain't doing that no more. No. No, and so when you say Black Lives Matter and they come to you talking about all of this matter, we was like, yeah, 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 yeah. But my house is on fire right now. <laughs> so right. I, I need to go over here and put this fire out. Okay. So now, how, how can we use this when we come to, again, September 13th, mm -hmm. PTTC, mm -hmm. click the link, be in the room at 6.30 on the Zoom call, on the Zoom webinar to see, to hear, to experience experience. Please bring a box of tissues because you're going to need it. Bring yourself some chamomile tea because you're going to need it. Be ready to go back into your, and I'll say lovingly, into your elementary mind because you are going to be taken back through rhyme and reason because some of the soliloquies, some of the monologues, some of the diatribes that occur. What? See, I'm getting a little English grammar here, right? Some of the, uh, uh, let's say, synquains or sonnets that you will hear are going to take you back and say, where have I heard that meter before? Oh, it sounds like this type of writing. It sounds like this poetry that I studied. Because your brain, I think of it like this. That which you were interested or introduced to over your life is a part of your cellular memory, mm -hmm. right? Whether it is a good experience or a not so good experience, it is part of you. Some of some of those events you have socked away because you're like, oh, that was uncomfortable. I need to block that out. And some of it, it could be a scent. It could be a sound. It could be a touch that brings this memory back. And you're going to hear information. You're going to see vignettes. You're going to hear names. And you're going to say, I've been there before. Or I've heard this before. Or I've felt it before. Where do you want people to go once they experience this, what do you want them to come away with it? Where do, where do you, how do you want them to feel? First of all, I need them to know that as a community, we are all fighting the same fight. We're all fighting the same oppression. We're all fighting the same enemy. Police don't stop to ask you if you're male or female or a child or an elder if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're bi, if you're trans, if you're Latin, if you're, you don't, if, if you're African immigrant, they don't ask any of that when they come and when they see you in your skin. You understand what I'm saying? If they, they, no one's safe. No one safe. So uh, uh, I think her name was Catherine Johnson, who was shot, uh, 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 a 90 some year old woman that was shot at like over 60 times when they broke into a house, the wrong house. 
or Ayanna Jones, who was seven years old when they broke into the wrong house and shot that baby girl in her head. They don't have any regards to what level you are in, in society or whether you are, they, they, they will stomp on a female, as a black female as, as badly as they will a male. It is just that brutal. So we need to understand that we, you know, look, we came over on the same boat and we might have got off at different stops, but we came over on the same boat. <laughs> and that boat that we came over on was steered by the same people who look at you one way. They don't care. They, you might get a little bit of grace for being, you know, as they call high yellow or red bone. You know, but even then, if you run across a policeman, he really don't care. If he can tell that you are of, 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 of African descent, if he can tell, if it's in you, if it's in your hair or whatever, if it's in your walk. See, we the, the reason why I use the format and, and the language that I use is because we are a language in ourselves. When you see a sister walk down the street, it's music. It's music. See a brother walk down the street, it's, it's jazz. It's blues, the way we hold our head, the way we swivel our hips, the way we, all of that. All, you know, where would we be without it? We would not be here. It's one of the things that has sustained us. It literally is. So I want to definitely give a shout out to those family members who are in the room, those people who have been with us during this entire period, the people who are not just watching us live. I'm trying to make sure I could see everybody who's on the side, who have not just watched us live, but are, will watch us on the replay. And thank you to the people in law enforcement and the military who do the good things, who do the right things, who the people who are representative of the communities that they live in, because we this isn't a monolith. It's not, you know, all, all blue, it, you know, doesn't see red, let's say. Oh, that was an interesting way to say that. Um, uh, but those who do the right thing, like I really, really respect the people again who do live in the community that they serve, or who Which is are important. <laughs> right, right, right. Of course, it is. It's like one of the problems with our policing is that those people don't live in our communities. Right, and so I, de I again, I want to make sure that we're not saying that everyone who's in blue is a monolith, and so those people not only that live in the community, but who also who intentionally do what I guess in the 70s and the 80s was called neighborhood policing. And so they knew the people in the community. Right. And of course, there are all of these, to an extent, like strategies, if you will, uh, with uh, community, what is it, uh, like community councils and um you know community boards or or where people are trying to sort of you know make connections. So that the police, yeah, okay, you always stand on this corner, but you know that when you see this grandma walking up the block, if someone says, hey, something's happening in stone, they're like, well, wait a minute. No, that's where grandma so-and-so lives. Let me yeah. go check on that because I know it's, her, right? Versus like new kids. who like, important to know everything. because people always think that we're bashing police or whatever. It's important to know that it is not even about that. It really, it's, it's so structural. It's so systemic that even good policemen or police women find themselves uh, doing things that they they don't even think is right to do. Um, but it because of the way things are set up systematically, it, 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 you can't tell me that if you if your son went to school with my son and your mother went to church with my mother and we all went to school together and know each other by fast first, first right. name that you're not going to police us differently. When you go to Chinatown, you don't see a whole bunch of white policemen police in Chinatown. You write about like people in Chinatown. You write you about Rodale Drive. You don't see they, they look like the people at Rodale Drive. They ain't making that kind of money, but they look like the people at Rodale Drive. But you go to you know Harlem or Brooklyn, and it's all these. It looks like a foreign occupation. So there's just something mm. structurally wrong set up. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it, you know I don't I don't get into this whole thing, and people always say, "Well, there are good cops out there." I I know that, but that we could talk about cops all day, but that's not going to stop us from getting killed and 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 going through suffering from these situations. So I I want to address the issue. Sure. 
I'm not <laughs> knocking, you know, we got, most of us have policemen in our family, somebody who's been a policeman or, or, or a judge or a lawyer, you know, um, so that's not the, that's not the issue here. And that's why, I mean, a lot of people will, will bull skate you by, you know, this is how they shut down the conversation by saying things like, well, I don't see color. Will you? Stevie Wonder sees color. Okay. That's why we have sight. Don't say things like that. You think you're being uh, liberal and open. You're actually not. Because if I looked at you and says, I don't see, a, when I see you, I don't see a woman. I, I just see a human being. No, I don't get to negate the fact that you're a woman in order to treat you equally. Right. I see a woman and I still need to treat you equally. None of this. Right. That approach does not work. You know what I'm saying? Going forward, we can't be doing that anymore. And so that's that's the thing that's in this piece. Is like we're not gonna we're not gonna skate around and talk about the niceties. We're not gonna do that. There's a piece in it called Loxodonta, and Loxodonta means the African elephant. And so the piece is about the African elephant in mm -hmm. the room. And it derived from a point where I was in a cast party, and all the creatives had come in to uh, come out of town to to. to to our opening night, and we're all chit-chatting, and they're talking about all the things that people talk about at parties. Oh, uh, you know, the weather, the game, the Olympics, you know, whatever, everything. But the fact that Tamir Rice got killed yesterday. Oh, we're, 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 not, we're not gonna talk about that. We're not gonna discuss that. We're not gonna have that conversation. And so when people would say things, you know, and I remember the, the woman saying to me, well, that's no such thing as race. Oh Lord. Well, that's supposed to shut down the whole conversation. And it often does. And they don't even realize that they're doing it themselves. That, you know, you shut down, somebody tries to have a conversation and here you come in with these blanket statements. Mm -hmm. and, and or, so or, or, right, or the body yeah. movements, right, or the body movements of. <sighs> well, yeah, the him and Han and all of that. And I'm like, so we're going to talk, you know, it's like, so there's a line in that piece that says, mm -hmm. we even talk about Serena and Venus as if she's not standing next to us in the mm -hmm. room. <laughs> right, like talking, like uh, someone said, was it you and I were talking about this? Like, uh, let's say someone walks their dog and then the person will address the dog, but yeah. not address the owner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I'm is sure. that? You know what I'm saying? So that that is the type of things that we, if, if we if were going to change things, my attitude, and that's what the piece says, no one's coming to save us Black people. We're going to have to save ourselves. We're going to have to put ourselves first for a change. Um, and we and when we lose people and, and all, all the way back to our ancestors, but we starting from today, say their names. Yeah. These were people who were dear to us. Right. You know, these are our, our children, our nieces and nephews, our our aunts, our uncles, our fathers, our mothers. Right. You, you know, and the problem is, is that it was, it's happening so fast in, in succession and with uh, uh, social media, you, we don't even get to grieve as a community the last person before another two or three of them is right, right on, top, on top, on top, on top, on top. What do we do with that? So this right. is saying to us, let us as a community take a moment to grieve, to memorialize, to say their names. Yeah. To, they matter. If you say Black Lives Matter, then make them matter. Also, when we when white folks talk about diversity, they talk about uh, uh, black and white people. There's more to diversity being black and white. You know what I mean? There's male, there's female, there's 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 gay, there's heterosexual, there's there's bisexual, there's transsexual, there's 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 a Latino, there's that there's a there's all these other diversities there. And so spirit told me, well, you I know that it's typical that black men are the ones who are getting killed a lot, but you know, no, you we're going to address the community, the entire community. So we're going to come in, we're going to talk about the fact that there's 64,000 black women and girls have been missing and nobody's saying anything about it. We're going to have that talk. 
We're going to talk about the fact that in our own community, that trans people are being murdered by our own people. We need to have that talk. We need to have that talk about how gangs are killing each other and killing people in our own community. We right. need to have that talk. So that's what I mean by inconvenience. This, I'm not here to be nice. This is, right. I, we, we, I'm not playing with y'all. I ain't yes, for play play. Right. We ain't for play play, no. This no. Is, it's no. serious. Yeah. So we need to have this talking and we need to pull this stuff apart and dissect this so that we can move forward positively into the future. So how, it, now this is a one, this is a one time only, right? An OTO, one yeah. time only. So when this is, when this is done, so let's just say I, I bring in uh, some of my, um, my educator friends, or I bring in some of my black think, t uh, think tank, you know, peers. Um, I bring in some, you know, uh, people who are leaders of uh, educational or, or religious organizations or social justice organizations. At the end, what charge do you have for us? What would you like for us to do to take, because everyone might not be able to see it. So if it's a one time only, will there be a replay at some point? Will this go to another there state? There probably will be a replay at one point on YouTube, I, I believe. Okay. Um, a lot of that I don't kind of don't. D no problem. I leave that to the producer, uh, Kimberly Juwan, yeah. <laughs> who's doing a marvelous job. Um, so, but I I just wanted to put it out there. You know, basically, the reason why I even did this visual project was because Kimberly called me up uh, when we in in, in uh, last last year in the midst of the, you know the pandemic. What you doing? I said, oh, I'm just keeping my head down trying to get through this. She was like, well, what you doing with the piece? Because she had done a table reading of it. I said, well, I put it away because with this pandemic coming through, the last thing anybody wants to hear is Black Lives Matter. She was like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You need to be doing this piece and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, literally, while we were doing that conversation and having that conversation within a week or two, I think Breonna Taylor and uh, Ahmaud Aubrey, I mean, it was like, boom, 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 boom. And I was like, well, I guess we're not taking a vacation during this pandemic, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's still going on. And so she was the one that was really that put the fire under me to even do this project. Um, and I told her that I wanted to do it um, to bring in uh, theaters and church groups and educators or what have you, if they see it and see some value in it, then 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 we can talk and talk about what that means. Um, I that's what I'm trying to get to. Like, yeah. what do you want to happen? What that afterwards? means what it what part of it speaks to them? There's there it's it the way that it's done and because of the way that it's done and it's done in poetry and prose and things like that. You sometimes you can just you can literally take one piece and do a whole scenario. Like you you can take one piece and do. Um, uh, animation of it. You can, you know, I mean, it, 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 there's so many possibilities. And that's the reason why I did open it up to multi, multimedia because they're, uh, the, 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 the multimedia uh, uh, has come so far today, what we have as far as technology and what we can do and, and sound effects and Dolby sound and, and movements and holograms and all kinds of things. Like I went to see, uh, I think I was in Birmingham and I went to the museum before I went to the lynching museum. I went to uh, the, the museum and, and, and around the corner and literally you you go in and there's this cell and there's bars and then there's, and there's nothing there but the cell and bars. And then all of a sudden, this is like a hologram. This little boy and his little sister appears like ghosts, like spirits, and they're holding hands and they're just staring and they're just staring out. And I was so freaked out. <laughs> the impact. And I was like, whoa, whoa. You know what I mean? There's just so much we can do with it. When you know the uh, the beatbox uh are the art of beatbox, um jukin. You know, something that comes out of you know, you know, the east east coast, or or crumping that came out of the west coast, you okay. know, all of it. and then you know, capoeira, which came out of Brazilian. All of those dances are dances of resistance. Right, right. And if so that's the way that the story is told, yeah, then so that's, that's what I said. If we didn't have our music and we didn't have dance, we simply wouldn't be here anywhere anymore because that is how. 
like I said, your souls look back and wonder. That is how we got over. This is how we got through. This is how we remain today. You know what I mean? So you don't want to sever those ties. <laughs> you want to keep that connection. So all, all I'm saying is honor, honor yourself, honor your ancestors, and honor those who have been recently taken away from us. If we can get here together every year at 9-11, you can't see nothing else on TV. They go through every name from top to bottom every year. And this the actually Jewish will Holocaust be the 20th. Is, is, this the will be the 20th year. Yeah. Yeah. The Jewish Holocaust is co is 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 uh, commemorated every year, memorialized every year. Pearl Harbor. You know. Look. Right. When do we get memorialized? Don't. Don't. You know what I'm saying? There was. I uh, didn't do it this year. I think they canceled it. But I did catch on to in in Brooklyn at Coney Island. There was an organization that got together and yeah. asked everybody to wear white. We all wore white, and we sh showed up at Coney Island. There were drummers and dancers and the whole nine yards. It's called it. Yeah. Poetry. It's called. Yep. It's called a tribute and, to the ancestors. And, and the drummers got up and led us down to the beach to the water. We all had flowers, and they had given passed out flowers and we got down and they did this whole invocation and we would throw the flowers out and we call out names of people who had passed on Wait That's a minute. when we left we would you you couldn't turn your back on the ancestors okay. you had to back up as you left and usually most of the times that i've done it a severe storm broke out <laughs> right. so you know what? i think that's probably the last time i may have when is the last time that you went oh Maybe 2016. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I've I've actually so I participate. So those are people who know that you know. If you don't know, um, June the second Saturday in June, second Saturday in June, and this must be, it's more than 15 years. It's more than 15 years, maybe 20 years. Um, the tribute to the ancestors and people literally do come from not just the the, the New York area, but people actually come from out of town. Um, we go to Coney Island, right? Everyone knows is right by the, the the Ferris wheel, right down, I guess, West 12. And we go, yes, there's drummers, there's dancing, there's poetry, spoken word. And yes, people are asked to wear white. As a brother said, we go to the water. And no matter what your religious background is, right. what, no matter what your practice matter. is, it's an opportunity for you to reflect on whether it's grandparents, you know, family members or people in in your cultural background or your historical background and you do two you do two or three things you say their name if you want to offer something to them because the thinking is we know that they came across or that there were millions who came thousands made it the people who decided they were not coming to these shores their bodies and their souls are still out there and to give tribute to the people who have lived and who have gone on, there's an offering of either, you know, again, like you said, flowers or fruit. Um, but there's a lot of cathartic work, and I'm so proud and to have participated in it. Mm -hmm. So I look at preaching to the choir as another opportunity for us to to look back, as you know, my soul to look back and wonder, this is how I got over, by remembering, by telling the story, by continuing to celebrate, by continuing to say names, by continuing to, to say, I stand on the shoulders of the people who have come, uh, who have come along, who have come before me, and now the people to acknowledge the people who walk alongside me. So as we're gonna start to wrap this, this up again, please, PTTC, Preaching to the Choir on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, we definitely want you to get to be in the Zoom room on, no, sorry, September 13th, 2021, 6.30, I believe is the time. Um, I will definitely make sure that I put this sort of in rotation and say this again a couple for the next couple of days so I can see you in the room. Uh, I'm looking forward to not just tell that this is a beginning. It's not a one and done. This definitely sounds like a beginning and that the conversation will continue and prayerfully will continue in houses of worship, in community organizations, in households, with families, with uh, fraternal and sorority groups, with social justice groups, with community activist groups.
with those people who want to put up the sign and say, you know, march at the rallies. Okay. What are you going to do after that? How are you going to change the narrative of young people so that they continue to remember? I'm actually going to try to shift my thinking and shift from the negative words of I don't or do not or they won't to I will, I can, I must. And so when I show up and participate in, in this, whoever is around me, we'll see. And those of you who know, either I'm going to hashtag it. And hopefully I know you have some hashtags. If not, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to get some hashtags about it to keep it alive and keep it moving and keep it powerful. We're going to get some backlinks to make sure that people continue to follow you at, what are we following you at? P-T-T-C. We're going to get people to continue to talk about it. And as this builds momentum and you get it onto more stages and more places, uh, I definitely want people who are watching to follow Stanley Wayne Mathis, beautiful name, uh, to follow him because this is taking off. It will have a life of its own if we continue to engage in the critical conversation about things that have been told to keep quiet, to keep in the house, not to, you know, when they say uh, the three things don't talk about is what is it? Politics, religion, politics and religion and sex. Sex. Right. Pop Those are the three things that that just gets everybody in a kerfuffle. About right. In a kerfuffle. I love that. Right. But this conversation, even though it may get into a kerfuffle, it needs to happen so that let's not think about other people that we can heal. Not, and let's not get caught up in our personal identity politics amongst ourselves. Like I said, we're all facing the same <laughs> dilemma here in America, and we can't afford to, to, to have that going on. We need to come together as a group, as a community, in order to, to, to fight this, to fight systemic racism, to, to fight economic racism, to fight, to fight all of that. We need to do that. And, and, and it's, 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 you know, black people, I love you. You, you, you're very giving and you're very loving and you look out to everybody else. I'm just asking you to look out to yourself for, yeah. for once, for a change, please. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, integration was a Trojan horse. It, uh, you know, in my mind, it all started with integration because once we, Closed that door and right. came to, and came to their party, <laughs> you know, with their, uh, as I say, grape infested potato salad and uh, <laughs> and uh, onion bits over string beans casserole. Um, Not the green bean casserole. Up, no, we show up and we don't. You know, we show up with aluminum foil and Tupperware. Meanwhile. They done broke in our house and took everything. That has to cease. <laughs> and if it didn't stop before, it's going to stop now. You know, as Nina Simone, Nina Simone said, you must lead, get up from the table when love is no longer being served. Woo. Okay. I needed that word. I needed that word. Thank you, Nina All right, Simone. folks. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We are going to click that link. So if you see the link, that's the ticker that's going across. It says eventbrite.com, E, preaching to the choir in, oh, and inconvenient truth tickets. It will be in the description for this uh, show, for this showing. And I will leave the cover up uh, for another few days. I will be referring to this over the next few days. So if you say, oh, man, I really wanted to catch that, but it's gone, I will continue to put it up because I want as many people from as many different layers of the community. Again, social justice, religious organization, uh, fraternal and sorority organization, civic civic group, the teachers, the preachers, etc., cetera, to, to be a part of this so that they can take this word and as we more people are moving back into the building, whatever the buildings are, <laughs> that some of the residual of this can be woven, woven into the instructional material. If y'all know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Or into some of the water cooler conversations or into some of the parking lot conversations that we have 
where some of the stuff that we talk about is fluff. Let's get past the fluff. Let's get to the facts. Let's get to the facts. Brother Stanley Wayne Mathis, it has been such a pleasure to have you on the couch. Thank Please you. remember everyone at PTTC, preaching to the choir and inconvenient truth. Please be in the room. Please continue to watch out, not only for Stanley Wayne Mathis, but for what we chat about here on the digital couch, where inspirational leaders inspire, instruct, and influence other people to live their lives a little better than they did yesterday. Thank you so much for joining us on you, New Classes you. in Second, and we look forward to seeing you at other digital couch conversation. So to all, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the people who are in the chat. And if you have any other questions or comments, we will catch them after we complete the broadcast in the next few hours to say a special hey. Uh, and we love you all. Peace and blessings. This is Doriel Anes Larrier of Larrier's Education and Resource Network, where I plant seeds to help you grow. Good night for now. Mm -hmm.